The subject is concrete, but it's loaded with steel. Steel is how concrete gets its strength. It has, concrete has compressive strength, but it doesn't have tensile strength. That's why that famous statue of Venus de Milo, where her arms have fallen off. Stone doesn't, concrete is basically stone, and stone does not have that tensile strength. That's why uh, when they started using bronze, they, they no longer had the, those problems with the statue of the arms falling off. Well, this is the, the heaviest rebar I've been told. I think it's a number 20 or 22. And this was the beginning of that Trump Tower. 20. It's like a two inch diameter. Yeah, 28. Easily two inch. Well, is it 28? Eight. Every, you know, number five is five eighths. Five is five eighths. Number six is six eighths. Oh, okay. Well, there it is. There's every trade in concrete. Carpenters, this lady is a carpenter. These guys are line and grade. They'll keep the building um, level and plumb as it goes up. I introduced these three, these four, and people say, why four? We only see three. But talking to this guy was just like talking to that. <laughs> I, I, I think it's <laughs> He may have been the, the, uh, the foreman of the skipping crew. <laughs> Concrete goes on in every weather. This kind of weather is ideal. If it's very hot, the concrete sets up very fast. Too fast. It can set up so fast you can't even handle it. I bet you've had that experience, Tom, in those excavations. Yeah, concrete takes on heat. I don't know whether it's exothermic or endothermic, but it's, it cooks. It cooks, exactly. It bakes like a cake. And when it's cold, they have to heat it. You have to have the right temperature for concrete. This is ideal, okay? These people are par probably part of the stripping crew. No, no, we, the carpenters. The carpenters? Oh, do you know them? Yeah. Oh, oh, good. I'm so pleased when people in the room say, I know that person. <laughs> it makes this... Are there three people there, too? Yeah. <laughs> here, here are some of those mechanical devices. We talked about the fact in New York they use mostly four by four, but here you can see they're using these as shores. Okay. Reshores are usually the four by four. I think it's because they go in one, two, three. Okay. These guys are in the winter. They're probably doing the same thing, part of the stripping crew. All right. This man is a finisher. He, um, he, he can, I can rem, rem, I'm reminded by his mask that protects him from the silica. As he's, he may have been doing the ceiling, grinding the ceiling. Carpenters, of course, and lathers. Part of the uh, part of the job will be given over to what they call a steel mill. That's where the lathers work together to make what uh, you call cages. cages. I think. Right. They call them cages. Those are slipped into the forms. Okay. That's the strength of the concrete. Lots of tr different trades of every kind, carpenters and laborers. This man is the one who sends the concrete up from the street, either by a bucket or maybe up the, on the hoist, sometimes with a pump. Sometimes with a pump, yeah. And kind of a cast of characters for the concrete crew. <laughs> the other part of, uh, of uh, concrete and masonry is the brickwork. brickwork. This man's a bricklayer, of course. This is a mason tender. He provides him with his materials, brick, brick, block, mortar. And this is a scaffold man. Much of the, much of the uh, brickwork is done on these uh, multi-point suspended scaffolds. And they crank them up the side of the building. A lot of inspectors in concrete work. This man's a, a, a concrete inspector. And the concrete starts with a crew. They call, they call this the lumber mill. And the lumber mill will start in the uh, foundation and move up the building as the concrete progresses. And as site safety manager, you're in pretty, you're in pretty calm circumstances when they first arrive because maybe three dozen men will be there working on the forms, and stacking them, getting them to uh, go up the side of the building and so forth. And then one morning out of nowhere, 120 people appear on the job site on Monday morning. They start that two-day cycle, that race up the side of the building. And that's when your headaches start. That's when you really have to use all of your management skills. Because they're everywhere. They're everywhere. All that the scaffolding you were talking about? No, that was the edge of the, uh, the form work. Oh, well, uh, the deck. No, that's the deck. That's just the deck. 
There's, the there's, some heavy, there's some pretty heavy use of uh, four by fours. Maybe on the first couple of floors that was up, but as they, they go up, they, uh, it changes. Seven o'clock in the morning, they're out there. The trucks are lined up, they're ready to go. The tower crane engine starts at seven precisely and up it goes in, into the buckets. And usually the concrete company or the steel company, whichever type of building it is, will have its own tower crane, just devoted to the concrete. Okay. And here is a kind of a, a, a portrait of that uh, two-day cycle. This is today's work. Yesterday's work is already finished and, and the, it's baking, it's cooking like a cake. And the day before, forms are already gone. The vertical forms go almost immediately. The shores are all gone and a few reshores here and there around the floor. And go, go, go. And the next one in is the plumber and the one right after him is the You know, wasn't that done with a slip fall in that building? This one, no, no. The Trump oh, presence. Oh, the Trump. Oh, yes. This is not the Trump. But I will show you that slip form. I do have some very good pictures of it. In fact, the pic th that job was done so well. It was done with the Perry system of, uh, of sliding forms. Yeah. Perry came to New York and took photographs of that building for its uh, brochures because Mike Tierney is such a thorough site safety manager. Okay? And here's a, another look at that, uh, that two-day cycle. The concrete is up here, the nets, two floors below the stripping, okay? And they extend out 10 feet. The bricklayer right behind them. Here, the bricklayers are all on this multi <coughs> scaffold, and the brick is finished. Here's the bare concrete. The big brick is being finished right behind them. The window's right behind the bricklayer. Now, is there overhead protection there for those bricks? And that scaffold there is, scaffold. yes. And, and that's a very important thing with it. That's, that's a, a very important point with that scaffold. We'll talk about that overhead that protection a lot. Yeah. Those things are like enclosed. In it. They Those may have that access. enclosed for a number of reasons. It may be to contain the mortar. It doesn't look to me as though they need it for heat that day, but it could be. Um, they're not using any heat up here for the concrete. So it might have been a mild day, but they might have been containing the mortar. If it's windy, they don't. The I was told by the concrete uh, superintendent their biggest plane is for the spray of concrete on the automobiles up and down the avenue. Yeah. So they may be trying to contain that with those, uh, with those envelopes. Any uh, questions or comments? There's a tower crane. Jerry, please use that brick box too. Oh, uh, usually the brick is, wa maybe they do a washing as they go up. I know they have to do a final washing as they come down. Yes. But they do one as they're going up? Sometimes. Yeah. Do you learn something every day? Here's that uh, needle beam. The needle beam uh, construction, they, they tell me, is the way they've done concrete for 100 years. And what they, is that? What is that? Okay, here they, these are the needle beams, and then they come with uh, sheets of plywood, and they place uh, sheets of plywood across those beams. And each time they place one, the what they call the leading edge changes. That becomes the edge from which a person could be exposed to a fall. That's the leading edge, all right? And it keeps being moved. Aren't they called strainers? They're, they call them strainers. Right. Yeah. Right. Strainers and bridge. The strainers are underneath the bridge. Okay. Here's a, a look at it from up above. Here's that leading edge. Okay. And there's that cage you talked about. They're forcing the um, reinforcing down into the form. Anyone tied off there? And you may remember. It's a wooden scaffold like this. See? Two by four? Yeah. Why would two by four? Yeah. Two sure. oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Sometimes yeah. you have to do, they got to improvise. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what we got to do. They'll, um, oh, and the forms have to be tested before or examined before the rebar goes in. Remember that? Got to be architects, superintendents. Yeah. Before yeah. the placement. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Before the placement yeah. of the steel. You may remember this a similar shot from yesterday. This is usually one of the lower floors when you have these the multi tiers of scaffold, these heavy duty scaffolds serving as shores. Because after the first floor, they're normally typical floors, maybe, oh, eight or ten feet. Yeah. But the lower floors are like that. Okay? The stringers, the needle beams, the uh, plywood 